This is Justin Pulitzer. This is my weekend review video for Sunday, April 30th, 2017. A uh, good amount of stuff to cover. I'm going to start out with what I have now have moved up to the 10 market keys. Some stocks here in between that are relevant to those. The major market indices and then some of the momentum stocks that we've come to know and love and love and loathe and loathe and trade or whatever. Anyway, um, let's, uh, let's begin, shall we? So let's start out with the VIX. VIX is obviously in the um, purely directional play mode, meaning puts and calls outright or in spreads. Um, don't want to be short too much premi short premium. And if you are, it should be dramatically reduced size. Um, you could see there's been some movement in the VIX. We had a bit of a, a mini spike. This was like pre-French election woes, and now it's back down, and you're basically kissing the range low. So moves below 10 don't tend to be sustainable. So I'm thinking this is going to either bop around, it's kind of like this, but I think it's going to be hard for the bears to really gain a lot of traction if they can't clear the 13 area and the 200 MA. They really need to clear and hold above the 200 MA, in my view, for them to uh, to gain a, a serious foothold. The dollar. So the dollar has been in a, I don't know, sort of bearish pattern, right? They had a bit of a head and shoulders. Now it's making some lower highs. You have now kind of equal, maybe slightly lower lows. This is a look below and fail. We had a rally up, now down. I think the determination of the dollar here is going to be this one, two, three, four, five day range. A break to the downside should continue to correct. A break to the upside would likely rally, maybe as much as the 50 MA. So keep an eye on this at range extreme. Um, yeah, anyway, this is just holding on to trend. If this does wind up breaking here to the downside, I think this will wind up having another leg lower and it could be even, you know, quite dramatic. Um, this could be, uh, I don't know, four bucks maybe as much possibly. So 94s, 95s maybe. Um, I would be starting to get interested maybe down around these reference lows, this sort of like spl splash crash low or whatever. Um, the 200 MA though has been the key. And as long as it kind of holds the 200 MA, I'm not discounting a pop up. But if we were, like I said, again, to lose those lows, I think the, uh, the move would be lower. The UUP, this is the ETF for the dollar, kind of the same stuff, basically a area down into some reference areas. And this one is actually slightly below the 200 as well. And I think for the dollar in terms of UUP terms, I'd really need to see it break this downtrend. I wouldn't discount the ability for it to do that considering it's like so many multiple days down, but you have had these like small he had one little small bounce point, but I'd need to see this break out and first and foremost get over the 25.68 to, um, again, be taken seriously above there and hold. It's hard to talk about the dollar without talking about the precious metals. I'm trying to um, make a conscious effort to talk more about them. I have been trading them a little bit more lately than I had been, but anyway, you can see we have a lot of consolidation here. The 200 MA to me was the key. Look where this really broke down from, stalled here, a little bit of a stall, and now above and now kind of holding. So as long as the GLD holds like 200 MA, I'm like kind of okay. Even if it breaks, I mean, you got the 50 kind of right below um, I guess if you lost this like 50, you could maybe see the 100 MA again. But uh, for me, as long as it holds like this 120, 40 area, I think you could use below 119.87 at this point, maybe as a stop or anything below the 200 MA if you're kind of swinging it long. But it seems to me like this might want to work a little bit higher over time. 
Um, silver has been a little bit more bearish, kind of a double top, a look above and fail. Now you have multiple days down, one, two, three, four, I don't know, bounce here, bounce here. Um, eight out of the last, I don't know, 10 days have been down. Even this was sort of like a bit of a downish day. Um, you're coming right into like the 50% fib. I'm going to likely start s selling puts in this bad boy again. Um, if you want to be a little bit more cautious, I guess you could wait for it to get back up over like the 50 MA. 100 MA was key here. You can see it gapped up and held, and now we're a little bit below it. So if you um, are sort of more of a momentum player, you might want to wait for it to get back up above the um, the 100 MA. I'm thinking, I'm trying to kind of play this and build a bit of a position over time. I've been trading it, but I think longer term, it's it's got significantly higher in its cards, but I'm trying to be a little bit conservative about it. A little off the script here, I wasn't planning on talking about GDX. Below the 200 MA to me is a little bit iffy, but we are coming back into some reference areas. Uh, if this were to bounce up to the 100, uh, 50 MA, you could try a right or right out short maybe, but um, I'm, again, more looking to kind of start buying the dip in this than I am to sell it after many days down. Mm -hmm. The levered version of this is this nugget, nougat, nuga, whatever, nougarific. Um, anything around here seems to be holding. If you lose like 740, this could kind of come down into the fives to retest the low. So I just be a little bit careful here. If you lose 757 um, and like 740, this like kind of area, if, if that, it might roll down. At that point, though, I would be more of an interested buyer because you can see this it makes um, this is trading in a pretty perfect channel and the and the bounce was quite substantial the last time so um, yeah this area is a is, is a right or right out area down here also if it, if it does continue to um, play the uh, tumbleweed game the bonds so TLT is kind of just chilling. Um, you had a look below and fail here. You had a bit of a look above and fail here. Let me zoom that a little bit more. Um, this has multiple days of consolidation here. This was the old downtrend line and it's still holding above it. This really needs to clear this one, two, three, four, five day range for a move back up. I think if you could get back up over 123.15, this could really start flying. The down area to me, I think sort of like these 20s and 19s are going to be areas that are important support. You could see there's a lot of consolidation here. So it seems to me like if there is a move down, it might be a little bit more limited um, considering it, it came down. I had an interesting position on, on this. I was playing it long, and now I'm sort of playing it like long light to short. I, have, I had a um, long call spread with short puts. Now I'm short... Um, a call spread and short puts. So I kind of don't care if it rallies. I, I just don't want it to drop too much. If it does and it starts getting below the 119s, I'd probably adjust this again. HYG, um, you really need a credit crisis to get a problem going, like, you know, big, big league corrections. Uh, this has been holding up fairly decently and until you start breaking trend and breaking moving averages, it's probably just gonna chop and, you know, do sideways to up. I don't really start getting too concerned about this until you start getting sustained moves below the 200 MA. You could see here it was met with buyers, it was quite violent. Here you have basically have tweezers, double bottoms, high or low actually on this one, and now you're back up near the range high. I don't know necessarily know if I'd be chasing it up here, but I, I just, don't have the feeling that we're going to be in any type of credit crisis anytime soon. It just interest rates are low. The Fed is relatively accommodative. It just doesn't seem like that is the uh, going to be the case. Oil. So some funny things have been going on in oil, right? Um, there's a lot of, I guess, conjecture about what's happening with um, the Aramco IPO, the Saudis. And 
Anything below 4961, I suppose, is a little bit vulnerable, but look at all these attempts here to really break oil down, and the bears are not getting a lot for it. It's still above the 200 MA. This is almost like a bit of a secure low um, playing out here. Um, I think that if you could get oil now back over 5022, which is this kind of high, range high here, there would be a pretty nasty squeeze higher. So I think you could buy stop this over 50.22. Um, if this does wind up rolling over further, I'm thinking this area. This is the 61.8 of this entire range. It's also kind of the reference low here and the channel low. So 47 seem to be like the kind of max downside for me at the moment. I mean, I guess this could overshoot to 45s and maybe 44s, but and that would be real nasty. But it just doesn't seem to me, it seems like there's some kind of underlying bid in this. And I'm more interested in kind of buying dips in oil into reference supports than I am looking to short it. If I know that may be contrary to popular belief, but that to me seems kind of like the right play. Summer driving season is upon us and it usually tends to be a more bullish season for oil. Exxon Mobil, um, they reported it was up and then it was sort of like a little flattish. The market wasn't all that exciting on Friday. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of in range. I mean, I sort of feel like the max downside in this is maybe like 76s and 77s if this were to like, you know, if the market were to really kind of roll over. But again, another one that I'm more looking to kind of like buy dips in than I am trying to short it at this point after being down here from 93s. And this just looks like it's kind of trying to build a bit of a base. This really, in my view, if you can clear 83, 88, um, and I guess the 100 MA, which wherever that would be at the time, this might start to really form that rounded bottom and this could start trying to come up again. So that's what I'm watching for in, in Exxon. Chevron has a long way to the kind of the trend line and is into this big chop region. Um, I could get rid of this for now. Remove drawing. So this is in a bit of a downtrend, right? It's been for a while. Could have almost two trend, like a secondary downtrend here. Anything below the 200 MA to me is a little bit iffy, but like where are the Chevron bears here? Like they, they're they kind of dropping the ball a bit. Like look at this, you have um, a low here, you had a big move down here, a little hesitation, another hesitation, and then the resol resolution was down, and now it's kind of like popping back up and you're back up into that range with a higher or low now this go round. So, I think if you're interested in this, you could probably, and we're sort of starting to form a bit of a wedge here, uh, 50 MA has been the resistance. I think you could probably short, if you want to try for right or right out, um, on a bounce like up into this zone, let me get the, get the ovals going, um, up into here, but uh, yeah, it just seems like this has moved down a lot. Any further drops, I'm probably going to be looking to sell out of the money puts into like 97 and below strikes. If this has comes much lower again, you know, this is a big dividend stock, one of the best of breed in the industry. And I don't think that their dividend is going anywhere anytime soon. So you have 20, um, 20 MA here is has been important. This is where this broke down from. We're right on that. So if we can clear the 20, I think that this could see this area. I think that the kind of the max I would be thinking, though, if this were like somehow to explode up here, would be like the 100 MA. So I like either trying a right or right out short here. But if it gets out of the way, but if it clears, you might want to get out of the way and actually play it long, which is honestly really interesting to me back up to the 100 MA. That was an important level, but the 50 MA gap below here, this has sort of not been able to get up here was resistance. So you kind of have to assume 50 MA is resistance until it clears. Once it clears, I think that this will become healthy again. China, gotta have your China. All right, so 
this is an intro also again an interesting pattern look you had this gap down this sort of like meandering around here now it's back up and it's like above the 20 ma and like hovering around the 50. so i think 38s are key if you lose 38s i think we see 36s so just you don't don't let it get too much below um 38s in my view that's really the uh, the kind of the key in my in my opinion here now in my last video i believe either the last or the second to last i mentioned that baidu was breaking at, breaking the triangle ahead of earnings and that i was a little leery of it cuz look it had come up from the bottom it was into earnings it was basically at a reference high and there was a pretty sizable gap down here so my thinking, and we're back into the triangle again. It did wind up kind of closing kind of like decently, but I mean, nothing special. I either like this, frankly, as a writer right out long above 182.96 here for a gap fill and probably beyond, or short below um, 176.07 with probably with put ratios, like buy like these puts, the 200s, and sell like two times out of the money below, you know, as far as you can go out until you get it into either a nothing or a um, maybe a slight credit or maybe tiny debit. I don't, I don't really care about that. But if you lose this earnings gap low, I mean, there's a lot of moving average confluence and chop around here. So it, it might not be the easiest move. Like, look at this. You had the gap down and then it like just chopped for a while even rallied and then got the tr low. So this just might not be easy. I, I actually wouldn't even mind just selling out of the money puts on this into like further weakness down to like the 200 MA or ideally the triangle low. Um, since it broke out of the triangle, it might try to break down out of the triangle, but um, we really need to see that kind of play out. I, I, right now, my, my gut would be that it would probably roll lower, but like I said, anything above the high of day to me is a long. Below the low, I might try some put ratios, buying these and then selling two times out of the money lower. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you can't go higher on earnings and you have a failed triangle breakout, you tend to rotate at least down to the triangle low. So a little bit more bearish on the Bidu, Baidu, whatever, however you pronounce it. I pronounce it Baidu. Um, the BABA. All right, so I've been long BABA via short puts, long call spreads, so that's like a risk a risk reversal call spread. I peeled some of that off on Friday just because this has been just like kind of chopping for a while, and BABA isn't like the most reliable stock. It's getting close. I think it's hunting for the old reference high was 120, but the 1.618 FIB extension is 124.62. I think it might want to grind up there. But I don't know that it's not going to like, you know, bring on the heartache first and pull back. Any pullback into like trend area, I'd be interested in kind of putting that trade back on, particularly if it's a ahead of earnings. I, I would probably hold that into earnings if it pulled back into this area. Um, and then like puts, I'd be looking to like sell like maybe hundreds or I don't know, hundred and fives maybe max. So. I, I, I do think BABA will resolve higher, but I'm a little cautious with it potentially resolving lower. If it rallies ahead of the print, I'd want to be Audi, Audi 5000 with that bad boy. IBB looking better. I had said that. I thought that this looked like it was trying to um, hold. It held the low, and now we're up. Anything above the 50 MA to me is okay. And if you want to use a stop or a right or right out short entry below 293.92. Other than that, this kind of looks like it's trying to coast up a little bit. I have on a little bit of um, Gilead. I put it on down here. I was seeing like these kind of poor lows. And I my thesis was it was either going to break the low here, wash everyone out, and then rip on earnings, or have some kind of a rally ahead of earnings. I'm just hoping this gets up to the 100 MA ahead of the print. That would be my ideal scenario to take it off. If you start losing the 50 MA, um, particularly on a closing basis, I would probably just take it off for a, you know a smaller gain. But I'm trying to hold for 100 MA, and we'll see how this uh, this plays out for the uh, for the earnings play. It just seems to me that Gilead is down so much. It just uh, who's left to sell, right? I mean, this broke the trend line here. It's holding the 50 MA. As long as it holds the 50 MA here, where it was resisted. 
Um, um, you can see this broke down, resisted at the 50 MA, gap down. Now we're over the 50 and holding. So as long as it holds 50 MA, I like long below it, it's just a stop. Um, I don't know if I'd want to be short, but I, I don't know if I'd really want to be all that long either. Um, IYT is the transports. That's what's kind of led us up. Um, this is at risk of forming a bit of a head and shoulders pattern. Not the be prettiest of um, charts here. Hold on. And this was one of the reasons why I also bailed on JetBlue, but we'll talk about that. Look, we're into the 20 and 10 day MA confluence here. Very key. Anything below the 50 to me remains a little bit vulnerable. If you get back up above the 50, I think it would be kind of pattern failure, and this could rotate higher. I'll tell you this. If you take out this sort of old high, I think that the move would be pretty dramatic to the upside, like for like another leg up. But I'm, I'm frankly, I, I'd like to see a 200 MA test if this were to lose this area. Ideally, the 200 MA would come up to here. There could be a bit of a day trade set up in there. But again, anything below the um, 50 MA to me is a little vulnerable. And I, this does look like it could be a bit of a head and shoulders pattern with a lower right shoulder. Um, it's interesting, though, that I think that this pattern might be hard to pull out because, look, by all measures, this was sort of forming the right shoulder. Now you have a higher low and now a higher high. And now it's kind of pulling back into like mid range. So I would be cautious. Over 50 MA, I like long, or um, if you want to play put ratios, I'm fine with like playing for like a 200 MA test, but sort of a little bit more mildly optimistic there. Uh, copper, uh, all righty. Um, here, a bit of a higher low, just chopping around. You really need to see a trend break and a move over the 50 MA. If that were to happen, so I think it's either like 200 MA, like a move down, back down to channel low which is really just kind of like a big bull flag or a breakout. And if you can break out of the channel, I think we'd go back and retest the old highs. Freeport is just kind of like chilling out. Like you're below channel. This was like a relook into it back down. Um, I'd really need to see it clear these kind of reference highs. 1383 here, 1379. So if you can clear that, like let's say the 100 MA, then I think you could um, see this thing go. But as long as this is below the 50 MA, it's a little bit iffy to me. So at the very least, I think this would need to get back up over the 50 MA and really clear the 100 MA to get me um, get me uh, interested. If this were to move back down, though, like into nines, I'd probably be like selling out of the money puts and we'll see how that plays out. Um, they reported, right? Their earnings were a miss. And the stock still rallied. So my guess is that this is probably looking to set up for a bit of a long. But I really want to see this thing firm up and hold the 200 and the, and the 50 MA. That's For me, that, that's a must or I'm not interested. The spy spiders. Expected move this week is $2.22. So that's either up to 240.30 or down to 235.86. So I was planning on actually talking about a couple of other stocks, but let's do spiders first. I think that that order actually makes a little sense to do. Um, so this is a bit of an audible play. Um, we came up from the low, look, higher low, and we jumped up pretty handily, filled the gap, and now you're kind of just sputtering around up here. Um, we're getting close to the old reference high, which is in the 240s. So... I, I can't tell you which way the move is going to be here because we have one, two, three, four days of consolidation. And it's just been, the market just feels like there's very low volume. There's very mild breath. It just feels like there's a lot of chop going on in, in the tape. And it sort of just feels a little bit aimless. Um, if you start losing this low, though, I want to show, I want to show something on the, um, I often do this when I'm, a little confused with the daily. I look at the weekly, and you can see of this big kind of range in this in this candle. I I don't love this candle though because there was you can't really do it with this right because there was this false. I don't know what happened here. This was a gap. This is like messed up. I, this has to kind of be corrected. If this does wind up pulling back, I think the um, 
50 and 20 MA moving average confluence down here and like 236s and 235s will be support. I'd probably be interested in if you take the short here, covering it down here, and maybe even selling out of the money puts down near like the 100 MA. Um, so if it gets down to like this 50 and 20 MA confluence, I'd be interested in selling out of the money puts and probably covering a short there. Um, if you get back up over these highs, this like topper of uh, 239.53, I think that will bring in more short covering and the S&P would see a new all-time high. So I either want to be long above there or selling out of the money puts on a retest of like the 50, 20 MA con confluence. You could see the 50 MA was a lot of support. It became a little bit of resistance here. The 20 MA also support, which was sort of becoming resistance. That area now should be, should quote unquote, be support again. So I think that there could be some risk of some back and fill, but I don't think it's going to be tremendous. Famous last words, but that just seems to be the case. Um, speaking of S&P, let's talk about a couple of the big sectors or whatever that's in there. Goldman Sachs, that, let's talk financials. These are big. We all know this ran a heck of a lot. This basically held the range low, bouncing, and now just kind of chilling out. I think if you get over this um, high here, the 226.09, this would see the 50 MA pretty quickly. Um, for me to construe this as pattern failure, you'd need to see this get over 234.63 and clear the 50 and 100 MA. So it's got a lot, it's got its work kind of cut out for it, right? Um, this isn't going to be, I don't think this is going to be a really easy long to pull off. And I don't necessarily know if this is going to be an easy short to pull off. I'm just trying to draw in a new downtrend here, which is never makes it easy on me, right? So check this out. Check this out. We have a downtrend now in place. Came up roughly to it and now just chopping around. If you can clear this last hurdle high here of, like I said, 226.09, it would be a, down, a trend break, and I think this could move up violently into this area here, the higher end of the range. Like this kind of came down, it was a bit of a few days down, now it's back up into the range. And if you could break here, I think this would move up here to like these lower end of these lows um, and the confluence. So that's sort of my thinking on Goldman Sachs. JP Morgan, I'm, I'm looking to buy this. I think the stock is going to be 100 bucks eventually, but 50 MA here, you have double hammers. If you can clear those highs, 89.05, 89.13, this will go back, in my view, to the old reference high. If this falls back down, I would, I'm just fingers crossed that this gets down to like the channel low um, area. The two times range would be 77.88. You have like a 200 MA here. So I either like it long above these double tops and 50 MA for a move higher or longing it up lower down into those reference areas. So I either want it long higher or lower. Wells Fargo Corporation, I had been short some puts in this. I still think I have some on. I was looking to add, but I didn't like that it wasn't holding the 20 MA here. Um, so the 10 MA to me is now the key. You could see that's where this broke down from. I might try to reload, or I shouldn't say reload, but maybe add a little to the position. Hold on, I wanna just see something. For a right or right out trade, either in two places, either above these highs for a retest of like the 50 hundred MA, or down a little lower to like the 52s. Um, that's the 61A to this. I don't use 38 twos. We know that. We use that for on bounces of weak stocks, not pullbacks. Um, you're making some lower highs. But I'm hard, I, I, I think the Finns want to go higher eventually. I just think that they're kind of waiting for some of the promises of the Trump administration to kick in. You can see it held this basically this range low. This day is when I sold puts. I was rewarded pretty quickly. So I have good trade location. But I am looking to kind of add to this maybe, start to build a bit of a small position in this. Um, I'm kind of waiting for a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit more pullback, and then I'll, I'll give that a whirl. My a little concern with this, though, and I am mindful, is that number one, they still have a lot of like kind of reputational overhang. 
And you're also sort of getting like this bit of a head and shoulder. This is a really awkward head and shoulders. Um, it's actually with a, a, a sloping neckline in my view. I mean, you have, I guess you could say this is your neckline. Or you could make the argument that this is the neckline. Or you could even make the argument that you have like a like a slanted neckline. I mean, it, this is just a really sloppy pattern. I think the Bears are going to have a hard time getting this to really roll over hard because it has a lot of yield support and you have reference lows in here. So I am sort of want to see how this resolves. I, I, I think I'd either like it long above here, a stop out below these lows, and then maybe here I would be interested in trying a right or right out short for a move down to 48s. So I like it long now above 54s. Or short below 51s. Keep it simple. Um, Caterpillar. So I want to show this is, this to me was maybe an exhaust. Uh, this looks to me like it could be a professional. There's, let me just show you something. This is the dilemma. Um, three year daily. Yeah, look at this. This cat came up from the bottom. It consolidated here and then gapped up basically to reference highs and a downtrend that's been in place for a long time. So is this a professional gap on the shorter term? Like if you were just looking at this, you might say that it is. But if you're looking at it from this point of view, like that it came up from the channel low to the high, this could have been the kind of exhaustion move. So what am I thinking with cat now? We're still inside the earnings day range, so there's not that much to talk about. But below 102 could begin to fill down to like 99s and maybe begin to really kind of fill the gap in that range. If you just played the range, if you don't think that this is like necessarily a topping area, um, I don't know, the 50% fib to me looks interesting, 98s, like if... You could play put ratios by like 92s and sell 98s or like maybe even 94s. Uh, if you could get back up above this high though, 105.98, this could really um, accelerate quite a bit more. So I'm a little cautious. I do like the idea of booking profits here into Caterpillar. And I might even be interested in playing some put ratios to the downside if it loses the 102, maybe playing for a move to the 68, which is like 96s, which is sort of the gap fill and where this all began, right? So that's my my thinking with the Caterpillar. Boeing looks like it wants new all-time highs again. Uh, this stock is a monster. It held the 50MA. I remember we talked about a 50MA. Higher low, now back up to these highs. I mean, this could be a double top, maybe. Um, the fact, though, that they've already reported and the earnings were really good, I, I think this looks like it's going for new highs. Just sorry, but it just is. Um, IWM. All right, so I, this is going to be an interesting chart for shizzle. So this to me looks like, oh boy, anyone who's been following me for a while will probably know what I'm about to say. This looks to me like a bit of a look above and fail. Look, you have a Topping tail here at the high, a forced move up here, a slight close above here, another kind of cat tail, and now a move lower. Um, it's moving ahead of SPY, right? So this augurs poorly for the rest of the market, right? Well, maybe, but there's a couple of things I want to point out. There, This might not have that much more downside to go. The breakout was 138.17, and the 50MA is right at the 50% FIB here down in 137s. So I'd probably, if we came down here hard, be looking to sell near dated puts below the 61.8, um, the 136s. Uh, if you could get back up above this day's high though, 141s, what, let's just say back over 141, the move will be back to the upside in my view and probably in dramatic fashion. So. I, I'm cool with playing like put ratios for a move lower, but I think that the 50%, if we could get to the 50% FIB and to the 50MA on this down move, I'd be interested. My guess is you might have a little bit of chop here. I don't think this is just going to completely collapse. Maybe you have like some kind of like a, 
um, a, a move up here. Like if you if you could if you want a good position, like let's say the move is up early on Monday, you could probably try a right or right out short at one forty oh nine ish. That was like this gap low. Look at these range lows, and then I, I don't have it on the intraday, but my guess. Let's look at it on the intraday. Let's not just cuff it. Let's really do it. Do it, right? Um, wow, I get goofier and goofier as I do these broadcasts. Um, where did this really accelerate lower here? Um, low here, 140.46. How did I know that, right? How did I know once it started losing these 140s is when it really cascaded, right? It's just doing this long, too long, knowing how people, people's hopes and dreams and where I would put asp where I would put stops. You're having a trailing stop, right? Um, this was a, a, a drag, kind of like a topping tail doji, another one, a bit of another one, double top here, right? Almost to the tick, 141.82, 141.80, and then poor highs and a back off. So if you're looking to reshort this, I think somewhere in this range here, like 140.48 to 140.09, that would be a good right or right out trade with a stop, a hard stop over 141.17. Um, so that would be a short on a bounce, and then um, or a, a selling puts down into here. So that would be my um, to be my 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 two plays on IWM. Move up would be 141.08. Um, the expected move is 202 this week, so 141.08. Oddly, look where that is, um, right to the low here. Um, the move down would be, wow, that's um, unbelievable. I didn't even notice that. Um, 137.04. So look where that is, down to the 50, basically. So that tells me that my range areas are okay. If the move, of course, the acceleration is down, if IV picks up, that's why I'm thinking about the puts being below the 61.8 of the range. I think, listen, it made a new high on the range. The 61.8 really should hold. So that's what I'm that's what I'm thinking. Unless of course there's something more serious brewing, which we don't really have any evidence of. This Nasdaq is getting wow, um, crazy bullish, right? You had this look above and fail. Once you got above that, it just triggered short covering. If there's any pullback here to the gap fill, like 132s, it's probably a buy. It'll hopefully coincide with the 50 um, MA. A lot of this is going to have to do though. With uh, oh the expected move, um, I didn't write it down, but up to 137.32 or down to 134.66. Odd that I didn't write down the points, but now you know. Um, Apple is reporting. Anyone know that little that little that little one? The stock is not really showing its hand here, which is usually annoying. I, I love when there's a cascade ahead of Apple's earnings. I call it. The shake and bake. If you want to see what the shake and bake looks like, allow me to show you. Um, this was a great example of a shake and bake. You moved up, a lot of chop, this sudden move down ahead of earnings, and then a... Oh God, what the heck is going on here? Let's do three years daily. Um, zoom in. So here, look. Let's use this one. This wasn't it. It was this one. You had this run up. Failure at the 100 MA, a couple of days of panic lower, and then boom. That's the, the old shake and bake. We don't have a lot of time for that, um, so it, we would need it to happen quickly, right? The, um, this is, uh, we'd have to, we have two days, so you'd need some kind of like panic move lower. As long as Apple holds over 143.35, the, the, the play is long. Sorry, it just is. And basically, you could use a, a close below the 20 MA as a stop. If you lose that, you'd probably see a 50 MA. That would be really kind of interesting if we were to see that ahead of earnings. If that were to happen, what I might do is play a put ratio for a move lower or just outright short puts maybe at the 100 MA or below. I have to see what the IV is going to be like. Let me tune in about what I want to do with Apple um, closer to the earnings. One of the things that has me a little cautious on the old Apple is Skyworks. They... Um, they tend to precede Apple. Like if they're good, they go. Apple goes, and Skyworks was kind of a dud, right? Uh, it hasn't lost the 50 MA yet. Um, notice I say yet, but 
I don't know that it will or it won't, but and I'm not trying to make a call that I think it will or it won't, but it it may, because when a stock can't go higher on earnings and you have a, a mini little excess here, nothing, you have like this gap up, and anyone who bought in the side of these few days now are disappointed. So 50 MA to me is the line in the sand. It's also a channel area that's important. If you lose that, I think you'd see the 100 MA, and that would be a interesting level for me because the um, that's this kind of range low, right? Um, I, I don't necessarily. I think everyone will be thinking this thing fills the gap. I don't know that that would be the case. To me, I think the 100 MA would probably hold at least initially in Skyworks. Microsoft was a drop and then a pop. Kind of a big range thing here. If this could, this may just grind higher. I would be an interested short if you lost like 67.58 or 60. 669 like these range low here these days these cat t these hammers at the top if you lose that i think you could get a pullback to a 50 ma um and remember microsoft will remain along on the 50 ma until it is proven otherwise particularly from all-time highs if it's from a lower high i'd be cautious but from an all-time high that just has been the um has been the case so microsoft still looks bullish but naturally i'm a little bit cautious Starting to get a little tired with um, my voice sounds a little laggy. Um, Amazon. So I thought this was going to be a move up, and it was, but the problem was it was up. It's been up so much that I think people just, it was up like 10 bucks or something the day before, and I think people just took that opportunity to sell the news. There was also a downgrade this day, which kind of like didn't help. Um, the after hours high was 965, and then when you had an RTH high that was lower and you lost the opening range remember when i was talking about amazon i said there was a pullback low at 955 and 952 and to use that as an absolute stop and you had tons of people out there who were like oh this is definitely going to a thousand and now they left a lot of money on the table i mean like 25 over 25 points if they would have um sold where i had thought so now do i think amazon is now going to fully collapse lower the answer might surprise you. I, I don't think so. What I what I think is going to happen, and I'm going to show you a case where this did happen, is this could pull back further. Um, it's also possible like Monday it's up and it just kind of like chops in the range and then resolves its way up. But I don't want to bet on that. Look where this stopped here. The old high here was um, 923.72. The low here is 924.33. So you kind of have like almost like a gap fill light, and the gap full gap fill is not much lower. I would be interested if this was like a look above and fail for this to come down lower, and then I'd be like somewhere into here, into the range again. I'd be interested in selling out of the money. Like I'd wait for like some kind of a, a, a maybe a bottoming tail hammer, like here, like this or something, or like a reversal bar to like hang my hat on and then sell out of the money puts below the 50 MA strike. I want to show you something why this bar what this bar reminds me of. This reminds me of a of a, of a situation in Netflix when Carl Icahn got out for the first time. Um let's just go a long time where I know it'll be okay. Yeah. Looky here. You had this dramatic move up and then this was the earnings. It gapped up, it sold off, and then just chopped for a while, and then slowly worked its way back up before coming down and then eventually resolving higher. So I think this kind of might be the um, the play out in terms of Amazon. So like it might go lower, but I don't think it's going to go like dramatically lower. I think a lot of people are excited about Amazon. Speaking of the aforementioned Netflix, this looks to me like a, almost like a professional move here. Like you had this um, this gap up above this trend, and now it's just bull flagging, right? I think if you're long, you could probably use a stop below 148.90. Um, if you've been in for a while, I mean, I don't know if I'd give it all the way to 146s, but anything below 146.22, though, I would have to say is a short to at least the 50 MA and maybe even the... Um, the triangle low. You can see you've sort of had a, um, a buildup. This has been a long sideways resolution, and it just seems like this is going to grind up. Netflix, the pattern, out of all of the momentum stocks, the pattern in Netflix, in my humble opinion, may look the best, quite quite frankly. Um, that just seems to be the, uh, 
the case here, at least for, for the time being. Um, Google gapped up and it got really close to the, look at this, I drew in a regression line. It got to the back side of it, almost the channel high and it's sort of selling off. So I think you could use this day's range as a gauge, um, long above or short below, um, maybe it pulls back for the gap fill. Google tends to like to do these things, like it gaps on earnings and then pulls back. Um, here was another, this was one, where was another one? This one here was sort of like a, a move up and then came down. Um, so yeah, if this like pulled back, I'd have to put a, um, I'd have to throw a fib on it. Maybe I do from here. If this were to like pull back and get like the gap fill, I don't know, like the 5880-ish maybe, I'd be looking to sell like 848 puts, something at below the 50 MA. You could probably play put ratios if this breaks here, like you buy up here, sell one here, or two times out of the money here. What I'd probably be looking to do though is like do one of those um, overwrites, put spread overwrites, like you buy one here, sell one here, and then like sell another one down here somewhere, and maybe even two down here. Um, near dated of course but yeah um this day's range to me is the key so over 935 the ideal scenario on it honestly for the bulls would be like a couple of days of chop in the gap and then it goes um i don't think i'd be a buyer on this on maybe on monday if it went up um but i'd, I'd love to see like some sideways chop work a little of this off and then go that to me would be more of the um sort of ideal scenario for that. Um, Facebook has got me a little bit cautious for a couple of reasons. One is this, look how s steep this is getting. I'm starting to actually have friends of mine ask me if they should be buying Facebook, retail friends. And this is also getting into, and we haven't talked about this in quite a while, but there is something known amongst my followers and I as the progression line. You see this um, area here? Any Since around, I don't know, January of 14, back sides of it have been fades, see? And look where we're getting close to. And if you attach these tops, you're getting close to the progression line. So what am I thinking? I'm thinking that this could be a, listen, if this comes down ahead of earnings, like if this were to pull back, I would say it's a long for earnings for a pop to at the very least a lower high. If this keeps rallying into the earnings, it could be an outright short, or if this like is sideways, it could be a pop again, like an Amazon that gets sold. Like I could easily see this taking this out and then them just selling it. So I'd be watching like the, again, if it does pop, I'd be watching to see if the after hours high is eclipsed by the RTH high, meaning when it opens at 9.30 in the morning in New York. And if it can't get above that high and it gets below the opening 15 minute low, it would be a short in my view for a gap fill. Um, again, if this the best scenario here for the bulls in my view is for this to pull back a bit, shake out some of the weak hands and then kind of get going to the upside. Um, if this just keeps going, it gets riskier and riskier to me because we're getting closer and closer to that progression line. NVIDIA. So I had put on a, a small long on this when it moved down here. Um, it's basically trying to fill the gap. Um, I don't know what this is going to do on earnings. If it loses 95s, it's going to be bearish. If it moves back up, it will be a little bit more bullish. I don't think this is really going to resolve to anyone's satisfaction until after earnings. Um, it's holding the 50 MA and the, 10, the 100 MA here, and I think 90, below 95 would get bearish. Um, until then, it's sort of okay. Intel um, was a bit of a pop and flop. Or, or, I'm sorry, this, I'm sorry, rallied up and then dumped on earnings, but look where it dumped too, right to the 50 and 100 MA confluence. I'm sorry, the 50 and 200 MA confluence. Um, it is a lower high, so I am mindful of that, but I think if you're long, you have to use the low, or if you're looking for short, below 35.88, I think could get you down to like 34s, but I, I think this is going to be a really hard-pressed stock to really completely collapse. 
Um, you can see you had one of these, and then it just like banged around for a while until it eventually resolved lower. So I'd probably be not looking for the short. I mean, I, I, I would be willing to try it, um, maybe sell some out-of-the-money calls, and then buy like a put spread or a put ratio for a move lower um, Intel. But above the above this high, you're going to have to consider this a, a, a successful hold of the 50 and 100 MA, and if you could get above the high, this could even shock and rally to the upside. So Intel is kind of like an, a, a more of a neutral look to me. Micron... This is an interesting play. Look, it broke the downtrend here, but it didn't get back into the channel fully. So I would be, if you're aggressive, and I think you can be with this, you could play long above Friday's high of 28.20 for a move back up, or short below 27.51 for a move back down to the 50 MA. So that's a great writer writer setup in my view for Micron. Tesla, I don't know what their earnings are going to be. I don't necessarily know if it's even going to matter at this point with the stock. Look at this. It's just kind of chopping around. I mean, the shorts just seem to be, look at this, all-time high on Friday, even with the kind of weakness in the market. Um, I will show you this, though, four years weekly, maybe. We're getting close to a channel high. So, and a 1.618 up at 325.67. So, the risk reward is getting a little bit not as fabulous as it was lower. Um, they're launching their Model 3s soon, and they have a, a, a truck they're launching, the Musk. This guy is just like the short slayer. I think any pullback into this area here, like it broke out, any retest of the breakout here and like 291s and 287s would probably be an area to sell a good spot to sell out of the money puts down like below trend like 273 like look at this you have a 50 ma and trend here from the lows over here roughly in line with where this kind of gap is so i'd be on any down move looking to sell out of the money puts below there um this stock to really get bearish number one you'd need to get back below these highs and then you really need to take out 265. It seems to me that this is going to be a buy the pullbacks, but I have a, I just have a feeling this is going to rip rip up to repair these highs. Any back off, it'll I, I'm, right now I'm thinking it's probably a long for earnings, but we'll see how that um, plays out. And I will comment likely comment on that a little bit closer to the actual print, which is on 5.3. So we have a couple of days of trade. Again, if it rips ahead of the number, I'd probably be looking to peel profits. If it just kind of goes sideways here for a bit, or even dips a little, it'll probably set up for a, for a, for a long. Um, Chipotle, I said I thought was getting a little extended here. Um, it Again, another one that couldn't get as high as it was in after hours. A, a topping tail and now pulling back. I think Chipotle is through the worst of it. And I am looking to buy the dip on this, but I'm not yet. Um, anything below, like this is the range, the earnings low, below 482.99, I think you could try right or right out short. But I don't know if that's going to play out. This could just chop for a while, but I would be an interested um, put seller anywhere back down near the old top, like 442, 434, 424, somewhere in there. Um, you have a 50 MA. Wherever the 50 MA is, I think at that point, you could sell out of the money puts. But look at this. You broke out of the channel. Remember, the first touch of the channel low, and which is kind of like this range low, usually is a buy. So if you're really looking to short, what I think you'd want to see is this to come down, bounce, rally up to a lower high, and then break into the channel for the short. So that's sort of what I'm thinking. Um, but I think Chipotle, like I said, is through the worst of it. If you go from the absolute low to this range high, I think selling puts at or below the 50% FIB on further weakness will be a winning trade. Starbucks, another Dalin. Um, this thing ran like a like a bat out of hell, right, into the earnings and then gapped down. It's holding the 20 MA, and it, there were buyers of Starbucks. Um, incredible, right? Incredible strength on this stock. This is um, I I wouldn't I would be interested in a short below fifty eight ninety nine like if this were to give this all back um, Monday or Tuesday then I think you could see the fifty and hundred MA test and I'd probably at that point be looking to sell puts below the two hundred MA 
because I think at that point it would probably be getting a little bit stretched and, and ready for a bounce. So um, I don't necessarily know if I want to be long here, but I guess above 6018 probably gets the gap fill. Probably could short the gap fill for a right or right out try, but anything below this 5899 I think is a short. Um, JetBlue. All right, so this was a matter of Justin in the past saving Justin in the future. <laughs> So I put in a sell order. I had a, I had a risk reversal call spread on, meaning I was short puts and long a call spread, and it was right at this high, and it eclipsed it by a penny. So I basically got taken out at high of the day or better. Um, and then it pulled back, and then the next day didn't act well. Here it had the cattail off the 10, and now it's kind of just listing lower. Um, I would be interested in selling puts again, close to the 50 MA. Look where this broke down. Um, that, that to me would likely be range low. So a little lower. I don't. I, I do think at some point that this bad boy wants to see 2544 again to fill up the old gap. There's a lo longer dated gap in the interest of saving time. I won't show that. But if this were to like continue for a few days, I, I'd either like it long over 2274, again over that high for the move higher, or lower here to sell out of the money puts again into like these 50 and 61, like in the 20s. Um, I'd probably be looking to sell 19 or below puts, something around the 200 MA. Um, speaking of travel stocks, and we could probably end on these, um, Priceline is a monster. Look at this. This was multiple days of consolidation, a professional gap, which is a gap and go above the old... Um, downtrend line basically to the high two days of consolidation follow through further and now again higher the ideal scenario oddly would be for price line to just go full on up to the channel high and then i think the gap up would probably be a short or maybe it's one of these hundred point down moves so i'm a little leery with um i i do think that this has the potential to go a little bit higher but you're kind of a little late in the move. This was the day to buy it. And now I think into further strength is the place to maybe sell it. And Expedia was what it kind of moved on. And Expedia is back just holding the breakout, right? This was a gap down and you have a, um, a pretty big range doji. So what do I like to do with range dojis on earnings days is short below it or long above it. So you could just buy stop it up over one. 3549 or sell stop at below 131.85. And I think we'll end it there. We've gone through a heck of a lot of material. I hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed the show. If you're not following me on Twitter, um, at Justin Pulitzer, if you want to show some love, favorite and retweet the video, that always is nice. I highly su suggest subscribing to my YouTube channel. Just hit the um, subscribe button. And then there's like a little bell with a plus and you'll get notifications the minute I do YouTube live or post these videos. Anyway, have a great rest of your Sunday. Have a great trading week. I'm aiming to do my YouTube live probably on Wednesday or Thursday. We'll see how um, the week plays out. Have a good week and cheers.